On the night of March 9, 1945, the United States Army conducted Operation Meeting House, which is the deadliest air raid in human history. Bombing Tokyo, it leveled 16 square miles, killed 100,000 civilians, and estimated to leave over 1 million people homeless. For comparison, the atomic bomb drop of Nagasaki is estimated to have killed 39 to 80,000 people in the initial blast. This building is one of the only surviving buildings of pre-war Tokyo. Let's go. There's not much left, but we're gonna explore the hidden relics of Tokyo from before the war. This building housed a power transformer that was used to power an airplane manufacturing facility. Because of the Allied bombing campaign, everything in this city has been rebuilt. Everything. Ohio. Hello. <laughs> what is your name? My name is Cho. 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 Zach. Zach. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Pretty sure he called me a gaijin. I think he, did. <laughs> he definitely called me a gaijin, which is like foreigner or outsider. The holes in this building are from that bombing raid. If you can see through the window, you can see the power equipment. The substation was used all the way until 1993. So not only did it survive the war, but it was continued to be in use. And the government wanted to destroy it and remove it but there was a huge protest and a huge organization and they wanted to keep it as a remembrance and memorial to the wartime period. Look, we have more metal rods. I don't know what those are, but I'm guessing they were either used as maybe power lines or parts of planes. And they left all of this. They didn't just leave the building destroyed. They left relics as almost like a museum. Apparently the substation is open on the second Sunday of every month. Uh, unfortunately, that's not today, so we can't go inside. Almost everything you see in Tokyo is new, is post-war, has been rebuilt. The city was almost completely destroyed by the end of World War II. So when you find something like this, it is incredibly rare. Tokyo is the largest city on earth. The largest city, all new. Let's go deeper into Tokyo's troubled wartime past with new friends. Goodbye. 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 Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Bye bye. Bye. See you. Another one of these spots similar to the substation we saw earlier, uh, which was used to power factories to build aircraft. This was a bunker that housed aircrafts. You can see this big concrete dome. This is one of two, and this was used as an aircraft hangar. So this area we're in is called a Chofu, and there's an airport. Can you guys see through the fence right there? That's an airport. The airport started being built in 1938, and this was all like residential houses, shrines. There was a cemetery here and the locals that lived here were essentially forced to sell their land to uh, the local government who then decided to build the airport. And when the bombing campaign started, it was used as a place to house fighter jets and defensive fortifications for the city. It's not quite as spectacular as the substation. It's kind of hard to tell. It's just like a giant black concrete but still, it's one of those very few things remaining in the city. Yeah, it's not as grand as I was expecting, but also you need to keep it low key so they don't know where the hangars are. The history behind it is interesting though. Real, a real World War II era plane. You get a better view of this one than you do the other one. There's not much left to see. So we're looking for a needle in a haystack. The Japanese army built around 30 of these hangars. They built them rather fast. That's why they look so rough and they viewed a battle or a war on the Japanese mainland as inevitable. They knew it was coming, they just didn't know when, so they started to prepare as much as they could towards the end of the war, 1944, 1945. This was the type of plane that would be stored in one of these hangars. Kawasaki Kai-61. Not quite the Zero, that might be the most famous wartime plane from Japan. Let's go. There's more we can go find. This is the last stop on our war sites of Tokyo tour. This is a shrine that also houses a museum. 
and is the most controversial shrine maybe in all of Japan, in Tokyo for sure. Countries such as China and Korea have a really, really big issue with this museum because the way it's portrays or doesn't portray certain things that the Japanese military did, such as the Nanking Massacre and the way Japan treated Korea. Uh, in, the, in the period of World War II and leading up to World War II. I think it's very controversial for the way it doesn't explain things. I was taking a video of the front of the museum and then this really sweet woman just came up to me and gave me this ticket saying that it's half price for two people. She says she's been there a bunch and loves it. It was so freaking nice. The people in Japan have been nothing but amazing. Again, this is somewhat controversial, so if this strikes a chord or offends anyone, we're sorry, we're just gonna try and show. Uh, a lot of these things we don't know about, so we're learning for the first time as well. Okay, let's do it. Oh, wow. Okay, so we couldn't film inside, and even if we could, it would've been very overwhelming. So we're not experts. Um, I will leave a bunch of links in the description if you want to learn more about this museum. The place is like very popular among Japanese. I think there's like a big, a lot of pride. The shrine is dedicated to uh, soldiers who fought for Japan and have died. So there's a lot of respect paid here. So there were some things that were mentioned, um, but the things that were mentioned were mentioned very briefly. A lot of like the war crimes the Japanese army committed were not really mentioned. Um, the massacre at Nanking, I don't think was mentioned. At least I didn't see where it was. A lot of the, a lot of the infographics and exhibits kind of paint Japan as being forced into the war, uh, mainly due to like the oil embargo by the United States. It just depicts Japan as like wanting peace, not wanting to be involved in war, but they were basically dragged into it, so they had to fight. Uh, a lot of the stuff about Southeast Asia in World War II. It's like, well, Japan had no choice because we needed the resources, so we had to invade all these places. Which, from a Japanese perspective during war, like, yes, it makes sense, but a lot of the stuff was, a lot of the like, key details that seemed like were left out. I don't know much, like, too much in detail, so I'm not gonna, like, go into, go in further because I don't know and I don't wanna, like, just imagine, but if you wanna come, I think you should. I think these parts of Japan and Tokyo are really interesting and there's not a lot here of course, you can go see electronics and anime and eat delicious food, but the war history is almost gone. So if you come, if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment. Did you know this stuff was here? Thanks for watching. I'll be more in the next one. <laughs> this is not her strong suit. I had fun making this though. Until next time. Bye.